Hey guys, so welcome to part two of materials. This time we're gonna be talking about stress strain curves. If you could see here, we have a bunch of stress strain curves and you could kind of see that they're all kind of different, but they follow the same shape where they're kind of like um, a straight line up here and then it hits some point and it goes down and we're gonna see the different points on the stress strain curve. Just for a quick recap, remember stress is defined as force per area and strain is going to be the change in length of the length, so kind of like a percent change in length. There's a couple key points on the stress strain curve. There is this yellow point that we'll talk about here, this yellow triangle. We have a yield strength, ultimate strength, and we have fracturing point. And we're going to see all the different types of points in the stress strain curve. So now we're going to talk about this little yellow triangle. Here they call it the modulus of resilience, but I call it the elastic regime. So some key points about this regime is that it follows this, it has a slope, and the slope is going to be, the stress strain is going to be called the Young's modulus. It's a linear slope, and the Young's modulus is going to be a constant for each material. So steel will have its own Young's modulus, and aluminum will have its own Young's modulus, so it depends on the material, but it's going to be constant for that material. There, there is a law that we follow um, in this elastic regime is that the st um, stress over the strain is equal to Young's modulus. This will only work in the elastic regime. Later on, this will not work. So the beauty about the elastic regime is that it reacts to the forces that are on it at the moment. So pretend I have a bar and I pull on it and it will extend because of the pull, obviously. And pretend I let go of it. The bar will return to original shape. So it doesn't really matter what happens in the past, it only depends on what's happening on it right now when you're in your elastic regime. So there's going to be a point where you're going to have to leave the elastic regime if you pull too hard. And that point is going to be called the yield strength. And that is the point. Yield strength. And that is the point um, the material is leaving the elastic regime. Leaving elastic regime. And it will enter what is called the plastic regime. And in the plastic regime, what happens is that you pull it so hard that when I uh, let go of it, you will still have some elongation. So pretend that this is my original bar and I pull it really, really hard. So some of the bar will go back, but it will still be longer than your original bar shape as you can see here. So this plastic regime will have some history because if I pulled it back in the past, it will still have some elongation from the past. Eventually, after you pull it really, really hard, you end up gonna, you're gonna end up hitting something called ultimate strength. Ultimate strength is when your material becomes starts to fail. So you don't really wanna reach ultimate point strength um, most of the time, especially for buildings and things like that. When you and if you pull it really really far you're gonna hit the fracture which is where the like the beam will break so there's a difference between ultimate strength and yield strength people sometimes get them confused yield strength is going to be the material leaving out of the plastic elastic regime to the plastic regime but the material is not failing per se ultimate strength and fractures is considered where the material is failing and people tend to want to avoid that so we, here we have two different materials, steel and aluminum. And as we could see, we could see the very clear curve. Um, it's kind of hard to see here, but um, let's look at um, a steel first. You can see it has the straight line, which is gonna be the elastic regime. And it's gonna have this line right here, which is um, the plastic regime. And then it's gonna like hit here, and this is the fracture point. For aluminum, it goes up here, um, elastic regime. Up around here where it's the plastic regime and it kind of fails within the plastic regime some things you want to notice is that steel you can put a lot more stress on it and it will still strain around the same amount so that means i can pull it harder but it won't elongate as much then also you notice that it um, steel could stretch more and um, before it starts to fail versus aluminum which um, will fail when you stretch it a little less so obviously there's pros and cons to each material. If you want something that's easily pliable and you don't want to apply a lot of force to it before it starts stretching, maybe aluminum is what you want. If you want something that you could apply a lot of force to and it won't budge, steel is what you want. 
There's also other factors that engineers need to deal with, such as cost and materials and the weight of the material. So this could get really, really complicated really, really fast. So the last thing we want to go over is brittle versus ductile. So the definition of ductile is how much an object can deform before breaking. So brittle is the opposite of ductile, meaning that it can't deform very much before breaking. If you can see um, the ductile section, it has this, it follows the same shape with the elastic regime, and it has a long plastic regime, as you can see here. It, go, it, it stays in its plastic regime for really long, meaning that it kind of deforms, but it doesn't break, and it breaks a lot further. Brittle, on the other hand, has the same elastic, re, um, elastic regime, but you can see that it kind of fails before it reaches the plastic regime. So when you're choosing materials, you want to be smart whether you want to choose a brittle material or ductile material. If you want something that breaks really easily, then you want a brittle material. But if you want something that could bend and not break very easily um, and maybe deform a little bit more, a ductile is the way to go.